Hello, my name is Philip Schofield. I'm Professor of the History of Legal and Political Thought in the Faculty of Laws, UCL. I'm also Director of the Bentham Project and General Editor of the new edition of the Collective Works of Jeremy Bentham. The Bentham Project is bringing out a new edition of Bentham's writings. There has never been a satisfactory edition. We've been working on this for 50 years. We've produced 30 volumes to date. There's probably about another 50 to go. So the course is taught by members of the Bentham Project who all have expertise in various aspects of Bentham studies. And we're philosophers and intellectual historians, historians of political thought in, in the main. And this particular course will appeal to those who are interested in um, theory, in legal theory. Bentham was perhaps the foremost legal philosopher that's ever lived, at least the foremost in the Western tradition. Um, it will interest people who are interested in, in legal history and um, people who are interested in philosophy more generally and in intellectual history. On the other hand, we've also had people taking the course who are doing, let's say, three commercial law subjects and decide that they have space for a fourth subject, which they want to do just because it interests them. We are not just restricted, the course isn't just restricted to um, people who have already decided that they're going to become um, philosophers. It um, has a broader, or can have a broader appeal than that. We also get people taking the course who perhaps are doing three commercial law subjects but have a slot for a fourth course and so they won't loop round for doing a course just out of interest and perhaps they've done history before or are interested in philosophy and come on to the course and really enjoy it. So um, it is worth considering um, doing this course um, because it does, it can be done as, in a sense as a, as, as a separate course and you can still get an awful lot out of it in, in that way. The Bentham Project is bringing out a new edition of Jeremy Bentham's collective works. Um, Jeremy Bentham was a great philosopher, um, well known as the founder of what's called classical utilitarianism. This is the view that the greatest happiness of the greatest number should be the end of um, government and of all human action. And Bentham was born in 1748 here in London, lived the vast majority of his life in London and died in 1832. He has a very close connection with UCL. Um, he's often said to be um, the founder. Um, that is stretching the truth a little bit but Bentham's ideas on education inspired the people who did found UCL. And two of the main people who were involved were James Mill, the father of John Stuart Mill, the philosopher, and the lawyer, um, Henry Broom. And those two um, figures were very much the movers and shakers in the founding of UCL. So there's a very clear connection between Bentham and UCL. More importantly, from our point of view, is that Bentham's papers uh, after his death were deposited in UCL and there's a vast number of these papers have never been published. And the ones which have been published were published in a very inadequate edition in the 19th century. So the Bentham project was set up to bring out a new edition of Bentham's works. And it's already been going for 50 years. And we've still got a great deal to find out about Bentham. One of the um, advantages of, of the course, I think, from a student's point of view, is that it's taught by people who are really, ex really experts in Bentham studies and at the cutting edge of Bentham studies. And there's also great opportunities for you as students to read um, parts of Bentham which no one has read before or given much attention to, as well as the more famous um, and mainstream of of his writings. And that's an important part of the course in that we want you to read Bentham himself. So it's a seminar course and it's usually what we call a boutique course in that not many students will take it, perhaps 10 or a dozen in the first term and maybe only five or six in the second term. And um, but it gives you a real chance to, as I say, engage with, with, with the Bentham experts, but more importantly, with, with Bentham himself.
the seminars are based on your reading of a Bentham text and then you use the Bentham text to criticise the critics. There is a lot of good secondary literature on Bentham as well and so um, you will um, obviously read the secondary literature but more importantly is how you read and, and understand Bentham's text. Now there is a health warning here because Bentham is horribly difficult. You really need to have a very good standard of English if you're not a native speaker in order to take this course and if you don't um, have good English then you will be in trouble. So um, please you know think carefully about that and perhaps before taking the course you'd be advised to actually read some Bentham. What I recommend um, and uh, is to look for instance at Bentham's most famous work, An Introduction to the Principles of Morals and Legislation. The first few chapters of that book are often republished in um, very um, easily accessible um, paperback volumes. It's also available online and so that's a good place to start. In terms of the course itself, where we start is with another of Bentham's works, his earliest major published text which is called Fragment on Government. And again, that's um, easily available online. Check out our Bentham Project website for um, access to these texts. And one of the first classes we do, um, we look at Fragment on Government. And I ask students to read the whole of, of the work itself. And um, so if you're thinking about doing the course, then you must, I think, have a look at some Bentham and see whether you can um, manage it. Bentham is regarded as difficult by everyone, not just by um, non-native English speakers. Um, even uh, English speakers, native English speakers, regard his style as sometimes very cumbersome and very difficult. But it can also be extremely witty. And um, he's also um, extremely important. I mean, why, why study Bentham? Well, he's probably, uh, arguably, the greatest legal philosopher who has ever lived. I think first and foremost, we must think of him as a legal philosopher. As I've already uh, mentioned, he's a founder of classical utilitarianism. That's the doctrine of the greatest happiness to the greatest number. We're, and utilitarianism is one of the major theories of liberalism. Um, it's opposed to natural rights and human rights, in a sense, in the liberal tradition. And so if you want to find out um, about liberalism, which is not um, dominated by um, talk of, of human rights, which a lot of liberalism is today, then um, Bentham's an excellent place to start. Bentham is important in economics. Um, his philosophy of utilitarianism forms the basis of modern day cost benefit analysis. You've perhaps heard of Bentham in relation to the Panopticon prison scheme. Um, Michel Foucault, the French um, philosopher and sociologist, identified Bentham's Panopticon as a sort of paradigm of the modern state because of its stress on surveillance and managing um, the inmates of the prison in a, in a rational um, manner. And um, so Bentham um, pops up in all sorts of, of areas. And so you might think, well, spending a whole course studying one particular figure is rather narrow. Well, I can assure you it's not. It's actually potentially one of the broadest courses um, you will um, find on, on the LLM because Bentham's interests range across a variety of subjects from legal philosophy, where he's often regarded as the founder of legal positivism, though um, some of us don't actually think he was a legal positivist, um, to um, economics, to um, philosophy. We'll learn about his philosophy of language, which is fascinating in itself, to, and of course to ethics, and then to politics, because Bentham was um, uh, an important thinker in the democratic tradition. So let me just say a little bit about the um, structure of the court because um, the various aspects of Bentham's thought are dealt with as we go through the course. So let me deal with the structure 
of the course in terms of the content of the actual seminars. We start off um, by reading a Bentham text, his Fragment on Government, which he published in 1776. The, um, throughout the course we'll be concentrating on, on Bentham's own texts and then looking at the, the secondary literature, of which there is much um, good writing. Um, to um, help us understand Bentham, but also using Bentham to criticise the, um, the critics. So we've got to read Bentham, so we'll start off with Fragment on Government, which is a great place to start, as in a sense it's where Bentham started in, in 1776. And that will introduce you to Bentham's writing style and to some of his key ideas. Um, Fragment on Government was published at, a, in a sense, an exciting time in history because it was a year of the American Revolution. And one way of reading Fragment is it has a contribution to that debate. But Bentham outlines some of his important ideas in legal philosophy. For instance, his opposition to natural law. He introduces us to some of his ideas in um, in, in, in government, his rejection of the idea of a contract. So I think you should already start getting the idea that this is really a course about ideas, and ideas in many, which in many cases are still very relevant today. Following that first class, we then look at Bentham's principle of utility, and this is the key to understanding the whole of Bentham's reform program. Bentham was not just a philosopher, but he was also uh, a reformer. So he did philosophy in order to produce schemes of reform. So we need to understand this principle of utility and the way in which he saw pain and pleasure as the source, um, the reason why we act as we do in order to maximise our pleasure and minimise our pain, and also understand how that creates an ethical position that we act in such a way um, that when we act in such a way that maximizes the pleasure of everyone affected by the action we act in a way that is right and proper from there we, we, we look at what actually underpins the principle of utility most people think utilitarianism stops there at the principle of utility but we'll find with bentham there is actually a theory of ontology that is of existence and of knowledge um, about the world which underpins is utilitarianism and really is a starting point for his thought and it will lead us into a really original view of the relationship between thought, language and the real world. In a sense, having got the philosophy out of the way, we then move into areas of social reform. The um, first part of Bentham's career, perhaps up to about 1790, um, was he, Bentham focused on jurisprudence, on legal philosophy. The middle part of his career, from 1790 to perhaps 1805 or 1810, Bentham was concerned with implementing or persuading government to implement various of his schemes, most notably of which was Panopticon, the prison scheme. So we'll spend time looking at Bentham's um, views on prison and related to that is theory of punishment. Move on to his economic writings. Um, the British state in the 1790s was facing an economic crisis, not caused by greedy bankers, but caused by um, war with French, uh, with revolutionary France and with Napoleon. And so Bentham devised various schemes to help the country avoid national bankruptcy. And finally, look at Bentham's ideas for the poor. These eventually were, uh, informed the reforms of 1834, the Poor Law Amendment Act, and so had a real historical importance. And that will take us to the end of the, um, of the first term. In the second term, we concentrate more on Bentham's politics. The final part of Bentham's career was when he became a Democrat. And so we'll look at various aspects of his thought from the 1810s onwards. This will include his own conversion to democracy and his own blueprint for a representative democracy. We'll look at his schemes for parliamentary reform, his views on education, and um, 
also um, his views on political argument. The course does alter from year to year depending on who's available and who wants to teach what subject and what is the latest research that a member of the Bentham Project team has been doing. But in general, we stick to those um, main topics. The final part of the course, perhaps the last three or maybe the last four classes, are devoted to the Bentham Seminar. This is where we invite speakers who are doing original research in Bentham studies, um, perhaps a PhD student, but also staff from um, either UCL, but quite often from um, outside UCL and quite often from outside Great Britain, to come along and speak about their research on Bentham. And it gives you, the students, the opportunity to engage with um, some of the top scholars in Bentham studies. And we feel that this is um, a real important um, part of the course and in a sense the rest of the course builds you up to the position where you can actually um, engage in um, real academic um, conversation and question the, um, the so-called experts on Bentham because you've built up um, sufficient knowledge to do that. In terms of um, reading for the course, um, wh when you, you start the course, we give you a very full reading list and at each seminar, we um, direct you to um, the specific reading. So what we give you is key reading for the next class and then suggestions for further reading. Um, if you do a practice essay, and we encourage you to do that, then the reading list has more um, suggestions for um, reading on that particular topic. Now, if you're considering doing this course and before you come, there is some reading you, you, you can do to see whether you'd be interested in taking the course. Um, I recently published um, a book entitled Bentham, A Guide for the Perplexed, um, which is meant to be an introduction to Bentham's thought and um, it would, that will probably give you as good an idea as, as anything about the scope of the course and the sorts of issues we, de we deal with. And you'll see that from that book that we, we approach Bentham from two directions. One is historical. And so this is asking the question, well, question what did Bentham mean? And um, you know, what, what context was Bentham working in? And the other approach is philosophical in the sense of saying, well, what lasting value do do Bentham's ideas have? Um, how much of Bentham is true? For an introduction to Bentham's life, then there's an excellent book by John Dinwiddie, um, just called Bentham. It was in the Oxford Past Masters series. Unfortunately, it's um, out of print, but um, is available um, in, um, you know, should be available through, through good university libraries. Unfortunately, there is no decent biography of Bentham. I think um, we're still trying to find, um, well, there's still so much to find out about Bentham that people are actually reticent to, um, to write a biography, though um, it's a, a, a pity there isn't a, a good one. But you could start, as, and, and it's important, you, you read a little bit of Bentham himself and um, the first few chapters of, of an introduction to the Principles of Morals and Legislation, a work which Bentham published in 1789 and is readily available through bookshops and um, is a good place to start, as is his 1776 work, A Fragment on Government. So that's um, some ideas um, to get you going with reading about Bentham. And in um, my guide for the perplexed, there's also uh, suggestions for further reading. You can take the Bentham course as either a half course or a full course. Now, the half course um, runs just for the first term, and that is assessed by a 3,000 word essay. The full course is assessed by a three hour examination. So you get three questions and you have three hours in which to answer them. And the questions uh, are geared to the course as it's being taught uh, in that particular year and there's plenty of choice. And so what we encourage students to do is to study a few topics in depth rather than try and cover everything. 
So the idea is use today what you're interested in. I should mention that the course is also offered and is taken by students on the MA in Legal and Political Theory. So we are joined by non-law students, and, but they, because of the structure of their MA, they tend to take the course in the first term. So we would, typically we'll have 10 or 12 students in the first term and just four or six in the second term. Often um, graduate uh, postgraduate um, research students will sit in on the course and sometimes visiting academics will sit in on the course. So there's usually a very nice um, mixture. This course does come with a health warning. Quite often we get students say to us at the end of the course, this course has changed my life. Um, so just be careful if you do, if you do take it. Um, I remember one student um, came on the course a number of years ago um, because he saw utilitarianism as the enemy but wanted to find out more about it before um, so he could attack it um, in, in, in a more convincing way. Well he ended up staying on to do a PhD on Bentham and becoming quite a Benthamite. Um, he's, now, he's now a professor at another university. So um, we do get students who get hooked by Bentham and um, want to carry on and do, do research in Bentham but also they find utilitarianism a very um, interesting and convincing um, approach and quite um, refreshing um, because um, you're told about human rights and about how um, utilitarianism has been sort of criticised and sort of exploded. Thank you very much for um, taking an interest in the Jeremy Bentham and the Utilitarian course. It's um, a course we've taught for many years and we really enjoy teaching it. Um, the seminars are usually really interesting, providing that students are prepared to do the reading and to come along and talk about it. And finally, if you want inspiration, you can always go across to the South Cloisters of the main building here at UCL and see Mr Bentham himself.